Hey guys, Negative9 here. Welcome back to another video. We're about seven days away from the big End of Dragons announcement on the 27th of July, where hopefully we'll get a new trailer for the expansion, um, and hopefully a sneak peek at a bunch of the features that will be coming in the expansion. The big thing I'm looking forward to is kind of seeing the scope of the, of the whole project, seeing how much we're really getting. Um, I know they've been working on it for like a good amount of time now, and it has of course had that delay to early 2022, um, but I'm really not quite sure what to expect from it, um, how many features they're really going to try to pack in there, and what will be included. So I'm really looking forward to that. I will be hopefully streaming it on the 27th. If I don't stream kind of along my reaction with it, um, I will be recording it and putting it up on YouTube. So um, definitely a big event that I'm excited for regardless. Um, expansions don't come along very often in Guild Wars 2, so you got to take advantage of them and really enjoy them. Um, and that's part of why I'm making this video today. Given that it's the last week before we get to see some of the reality of what's coming in the expansion, I wanted to take some more time to speculate and kind of enjoy this period where we can kind of dream up stuff to put into the game. And specifically in this video, I kind of want to talk about features from other games, maybe other MMOs, that we'd like ArenaNet and Guild Wars 2 to kind of snag from, from other games. I want to start off with one of the really standout features that people have been speculating about for quite a while now in preparation for End of Dragons, um, and a feature that I really think would fit really well in Guild Wars 2, and that is of course player housing. It's a thing that kind of, the every every time you see a list of, you know, someone's perfect MMO, where they, where they give all their ingredients that they would have in the best game ever, um, almost all of those lists include some sort of form of player housing. And very few games have really, um, I don't know, really lived up to the expectations that players have, I think, when they want something like player housing in a game. It's obviously hard to implement, given that, you know, do you go instanced? Do you go open world? Is there enough space in your world to, to house all these individual players and all the complications that come along with that? One game in particular that I'd like to touch on that did it really well I think the best was Wildstar. Wildstar player housing was really remarkable because it really took the amount of customization and detail and just the way it was woven through the rest of the game to another level that I haven't really seen in any other MMO. I know um, Elder Scrolls Online has a pretty good uh, player housing system that people seem to enjoy, but in my opinion, Wildstar by far had the best player housing system I've seen in an MMO. The way it worked in Wildstar is you would unlock things called sky plots. So they were individually instanced areas that were on kind of floating platforms up in the sky. And there was some interesting kind of in-game story behind, you know, who was providing you with these sky plots and how they how they were set up and stuff that I really enjoyed that I think Guild Wars 2 could replicate um, pretty well um, with the, you know, lore that we have to work with. But the great thing about player housing Wildstar was that you could pick up items for your house in all sorts of different places. Questing, you know, all these uh, different bosses dropped items for your player housing, some were more rare than others. So it really had a sense of kind of progression and rarity, very similar to how like gear normally works in an MMO, Guild Wars 2, World of Warcraft, etc. Um, certain gear is more rare and more expensive and better or more flashy, especially in Guild Wars 2. I think this would work because of the focus on style over actual stats, so um, being able to to receive, you know, stylish items from a certain raid boss or quest or event chain that was particularly flashy or rare, uh, I think that would create a huge another level of interest in, you know, Fashion Wars 2, as we like to call it. Of course, we do have, you know, chairs, all the different stylized chairs that you can sit in and collect in Guild Wars 2 now. But back to Wildstar, the way it worked is you would unlock this this plot in the sky, and then the first thing you'd have to do is you'd have to clear it of enemies and kind of clear out all the rubbish and stuff um, and make it suitable for your first little encampment. The other cool thing about these sky plots was that once you cleared everything and you began to upgrade your house and kind of started customizing it, um, it wasn't just that. You had the whole plot of land also had these things called sockets, which allowed you to um, upgrade and purchase like little plugs of utilities like um, workbenches or other crafting stations, you know, trading post type things that you could then use from your home instance without having to leave. And so it was a really nice quality of life feature, but there was also some real fun stuff that you could do. Like I believe they had like you could have a raid portal in your home instance, you could have 
little ramps for your hoverboards and stuff. That I remember that was one of my favorite things about Wildstar um, was the ability to create all these cool courses in your in your home instance or Skyplot. And I'm not sure if this actually ever got implemented, but in a lot of the early trailers for Wildstar Player Housing, they talked about sort of a, a very similar thing to the dynamic event system where uh, in the course of working on your Skyplot, there could be randomized events where your plot could be invaded by raiders or a variety of other things could happen. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. Um, but it would require you to either gather up some friends or kind of clear them out on your own. And so it was really not just a socially kind of isolated feature. It definitely could be that if you wanted it to. You could have all your amenities um, kind of you know, stuffed in your little home instance. You never have to really leave um, unless you were you know leveling up or whatever, raiding. And so you could kind of stay in your home instance, but they also had the ability to kind of invite your friends over to them, uh, let them manage your crops and stuff. So if you were not going to play for a couple weeks or if you were away, you could tell one of your friends, hey, uh, can you manage my home instance and my plot? And then they would actually get a share of your, you know, uh, profit or rewards for that week or however long it was. And so it really encouraged people to kind of work together and you could share your plots with other people and then you can also set them as public I believe so you could kind of have a completely public uh, player housing instance that people could come in and see all your cool stuff. I remember right before Wildstar locked shut down, locked down, um, one of the last videos I saw before it was kind of taken offline was people going around to all the crazy cool home instances that people had created and I just love that extra level of detail in the game like it's, and it's kind of a casual friendly uh, element too. Guild Wars 2 isn't quite as casual as people make it out to be. I think it's, it has a little bit of a bad rap there, but it is, I think, a rightfully so a, casually, a casual friendly MMO, and I think that is one of its strengths. Um, the weird thing about Wildstar was, even though it had the best player housing system I've ever seen, which could be seen as kind of a casual, um, you know, mini game type thing within your game, um, something that you could hop in and out of and work on as you go, um, not a whole lot of a time commitment. The funny thing about it was Wildstar was kind of really tailored towards a hardcore audience, and that really at the end of the day is why it kind of failed in the end. And that's why I would love Guild Wars 2 as kind of one of the more casual friendly MMOs to adopt this feature and, and really make it their own. Because sometimes when you log into an MMO, like sometimes I just don't have the energy to really like go hard and like grind. Um, I know some people really enjoy that but sometimes i'm like man i've had a long day i don't really want to like go grind and do a bunch of you know whatever the more competitive content is in your game um, whether it's fractals or raids or whatever it is um sometimes it's just like ah oh, man i don't know if i have the energy for that today so i do more casual stuff that's where fashion wars is really great sometimes i just log in and mess with my character's gear and um, visuals for a little bit and you know you can do that with crafting sometimes you just go and collect some mats for your legendary or whatever um do cooking, blah, blah, blah. That's where maybe fishing would also be a great thing to add um, in End of Dragons. Um, but being able to log in and kind of have something that promotes a change of pace would be really great. I love the idea of being able to log in and just mess with my home instance um, or my player housing for a little bit before I you know, log off for the night. So we've talked about how player housing worked in Wildstar. Um, how would it work in Guild Wars 2? That's a little bit of a tricky one, but I think three or four years ago, I would have never thought player housing would be a thing. I didn't think it was something that ArenaNet would really be interested in. Um, it's kind of something that they they didn't seem like they wanted to promote. It didn't it didn't kind of vibe with the way they set up Guild Wars 2 systems. But nowadays, I think it's actually a real uh, possibility. One of the main hurdles with player housing for a long time with Guild Wars 2 was, I think ArenaNet were really worried about separating the the player population. Like that used to be a huge worry for them. And I remember, I mean, maybe it is still, but um, people used to always use that as an excuse to why they wouldn't add certain features, like they really don't want to separate population. Today, I don't really think that's an issue at all. We've kind of passed through that portal already. We've kind of opened up that box. Um, whether it be the crazy convenience zones we have now, like the Mistlock Sanctuary, um, and other convenience areas like that, I don't know how many there are in the game now, at least two or three, um, that of course they're still like open, but like they're gated by the gem store, so like, I don't know how open and like, you're still separating the population there. So, uh, I'm, of course, there's they're always packed, but it's still a subsection of your player base that's in a completely paywalled, you know, instance. 
And of course, we also have guild halls now, um, which you know are, are a great addition and are one of the main reasons I think player housing is uh, a real possibility. Is they kind of already have the basic framework for a player housing system. And of course, you know, going back all the way to the release of Guild Wars 2, we have our home instances in the capital cities of your race. So, you know, who knows? This may have been a feature that, that they kind of. I mean, it was a feature that they kind of wanted to work on in development and that kind of, I don't know if it really lived up to their expectations or if it, it was part of kind of the, the stuff that got cut before release or what, but there, all the, you know, convention demos and stuff they were talking about, you know, a really dynamic home instance that would change based on your action th actions throughout the story. There's the famous example of the, you know, you can save the orphanage or the hospital, I think, and they talked like that was the tip of the iceberg, but that really was the entire iceberg. There was really not much else to do in the home instance. Who knows, that could be, you know, depending on your perspective, that could be a big deterrent from this theory that we could have player housing because they already have it in and it doesn't really work very well and they already tried it, they gave it a go, you know. How would they have another player housing system? Wouldn't that be confusing to new players? And that's where we kind of get into the, the the specifics of how they would implement it into the game. You know, in Guild Wars 2, are we going to renovate the home instances and completely redo them and, you know, have a, a special place where you can have your own plot, where you can build your house or whatever? Would it be linked to your race so it would be like a cultural housing system? Um, or, of course, one of the things I love about Guild Wars 2 and one thing that you could uh, make it in a way very similar to Wildstar is as a personal instance in the mists, you know, the mists are kind of this catch-all where we can come up, we, we have a lore-based reason to come up with basically anything. You can have anything you want just pop out of the mists at any time and it makes sense in Guild Wars 2. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of lame sometimes, I'm, I think sometimes people don't like that that's how the mists sometimes function. Um, but it'd be a great place to have a little home instance because you could have, you know, all sorts of really unique customization options that you wouldn't be able to have if it was, you know, a home instance in Divinity's Reach. You know, certain things would look out of place, certain things wouldn't be realistic. The, one of the things I loved about player housing in Wildstar is you could change the skybox. Um, so that definitely probably wouldn't be possible if we kind of renovated the existing home instances in Guild Wars 2. So that's another big thing to think about. I would personally be more in favor of a home instance that was in the mists, just for maximum customization options. It would it could make dynamic event system in your home instance kind of more interesting if you could have these random threats pop out of the mists, you know, mysterious mist travelers popping in and out of your home instance, leaving, who knows, maybe unique collections and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of really cool possibilities with that. And of course, we haven't talked about the mastery system. That could be a huge part of, you know, a potential player housing system if that's how they wanted to do it. Um, I'm sure there's all sorts of cool masteries that they could uh, attach to that. Um, it really would be a big box feature um, for the expansion. And I think even if it doesn't come in End of Dragons, there's a lot of paths down which player housing, you know, sits at the end. There's lots of different ways it could happen. Whether, like I said, it is an End of Dragons now or whether it's down the line. I think there's a lot of different ways we could arrive there one day. Um, given that it is a system that they've kind of, you know, played around with before at launch, um, they've shown that they have some of the basic um, technical ability to have it in the game with guild halls. So I do really think it is realistic. Do I think it's coming in End of Dragons? I'm gonna have to say no. I think it may be one step too far for End of Dragons, especially if they're thinking about another huge feature like the Tengu as a playable race. Um, I th yeah, I think it just might be too far for this expansion. I do think, um, you know, if there is Tengu, probably not player housing, um, unfortunately. But if there's no Tengu, who knows, maybe there is player housing. I do think those two features are so broad in their scope that I would be, it would, I would, I would be shocked if Arena Knight could fit two systems like that into the expansion, along with a whole new, you know, continent and Cantha and the new elite specializations. I mean, that would be really impressive. Um, who knows, new mounts too. I think for End of Dragons, I would take something like fishing. Something like fishing, Tengu, 
the new the new masteries, whatever they might be, maybe a new mount, and then the new elite specializations and Cantha, of course. I would take that with an eye on kind of player housing maybe in the living world or whatever feature doesn't end up in End of Dragons that people kind of are interested in, add that in as a mastery or as a just an exciting feature in living world. Those are my thoughts. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of really creative ideas on how this player housing feature could be could be in, implemented into Guild Wars 2. Do you think it should be, or should we kind of leave it? Should we kind of let other games do that? Other games, even outside of Wildstar, seem to do it well. Elder Scrolls Online seem to have a pretty good go of it. But of course, the one final point that I almost forgot about is monetization. Player housing could be a really good way for ArenaNet to monetize more things in the game, which, whether that's a good or bad thing, who knows? Um, I know that's how it works in Elder Scrolls Online. You can buy certain houses like on their version of the gem store. I do think it would work for Guild Wars 2, and that's another reason why I think it might happen, but uh, I think I'm going to call it there. You can, you might be able to tell I have a lot of thoughts on this. Uh, it's something that I've you know, thought about in the past a lot. It's a system that I really would enjoy, but it's a tricky one. you got to do it right. So, once again, let me know your thoughts on player housing in Guild Wars 2, if it will be coming in End of Dragons, and if not, you know, what should we, what should we have in its place? So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.